What's up, y'all? In this video, we're going to talk about Hellion in Darkest Dungeon 2. So this is a guide on how to play her. And as always, we're going to cover the strengths, weaknesses, how to actually use her, what her skills do, what her paths do, her trinkets, and some teammates to help get you started. For strengths, what is Hellion good at? She has a lot of reach. So she can hit a lot of stuff from ranks one or two. She can put out a ton of damage, especially with Ravager and stuff. Plus she has a passive that gives her bonus damage. And then her final strength is that she has a lot of self-sustain through Adrenaline Rush and Revelry. Hellion, obviously not without her own weaknesses. The first major one is that she desperately needs Hero Shrines. Her starting skills are not the best, and a lot of her things that give her survivability are from her shrines. So she's a character that feels much weaker without the extra skills, and then once you get the new skills, she becomes much better. Hellion is another character that wants mastery desperately. This is because it bumps up all of her damage, and since she scales so well with damage buffs, it's usually a good idea to feed her the mastery as well. So over the course of the run, she could easily get five points for her main set of skills, and it's actually good. At the same time though, everyone else on the team also wants mastery, so you have to choose wisely. Her final major weakness is that you want to charge her passive up so she has to get low HP and the easiest way to do that is to taunt but if you end up taunting a lot that makes you a magnet for negative tokens as well. So you can sit there and spam toe to toe and get a bunch of taunt and stuff but you might get hit by weaken or blind for instance and that can really slow you down. How do we play Hellion? Currently there are two ways to play her mainly and that's either to put her in rank 1 or 2 depending on what your loadout is, but usually it's rank one. And when she's up front, you want to try and save your moves that wind you for as long as possible. So things like Howling In, Bleed Out and stuff, you wanna not have to press those until the winded penalty isn't really a big deal. Or if you do, you wanna have a way to recover it quickly. The easiest way to get this done is to start from the back of the enemy party and then move your way up to the front. So start with like Iron Swan or If It Bleeds if you have it. And then once you get up to the front enemies, that's when you start using Wicked Hack or Howling In. The next tip is to make sure Hellion is low HP, but not like dangerously low. So for her passive, she gets a bonus 25% damage when she's under half HP. And then she gets another bonus 25% when she's under 25%. So she gets plus 50% damage potentially. So this means that you want to take some damage, but save yourself healing and make sure that you're not in immediate danger. The final tip on how to play Hellion is to equip some kind of movement skill. The recently buffed breakthrough is pretty good for this and toe to toe is also good because it can clear wind it with mastery. You just need a way for her to make her way back up front if she needs to. Now it's time to talk about Hellion's skills and we'll start with her initial set of five. Wicked Hack is pretty clear cut. It's just damage, it hits the front from the front and if the target's comboed, it does more damage. Since she can scale her damage really well with her low HP passive and strength and crit and all that, the combo actually helps us get to really good levels. So it's it's a good use of combo, surprisingly, even though it's not fancy in what it does. Iron Swan is good just for the upgrade to get the combo. Like that's that's really good. You know, just six to ten damage is pretty good for backline enemies. And then comboing them for someone else is always good. So definitely not a bad thing to spend early mastery on. Yop is a really interesting move because it doesn't see too much use but like when you upgrade it it's actually very powerful it's not a great unupgraded move because it's one weaken on two people removes stealth which isn't too common but it is nice that it does that and it wins her but if you upgrade it and they're comboed, you can stun them, and you drop on too weak on top of that. That is that is really good, so it's really not usable without the mastery, but if you do master it, then it becomes very good. But I don't use this one too much outside of Carcass. If it bleeds is pretty good. I think it got buffed for a bit more damage in terms of... Looks like the bleed went up, if I remember correctly. But this is just consistent bleed damage. You just jab what's in, you know, two and three. So if you want to run... And if it bleeds Hellion, it's actually surprisingly good with um, a couple of her paths. So we'll talk about those later, but it's a solid move. Toe to toe. This is pretty much what holds Ravager together. I mean, it it's always Howling End getting changed, but Howling End's got its own reason why it's super good. 
it's toe to toe that really glues this character together for Ravager because she can always move forward, which cancels the negatives of Howling In while getting rid of Winded. And then she roots herself. So if you need to not move after using Howling End, you can also do it the other direction or the other order. And it's good because taunting herself gets more hits at her or directed at her so she can charge her uh, low health passive. It's a really good move. Don't need to upgrade it if you're not winding yourself. But if you're using Howling End, Bleed Out, not even Bleed Out, just if you're using Howling End, really, then you want to upgrade it, but not before. Adrenaline Rush, this is one she gets from a shrine. This move is insane. And currently, you know, it's pretty good for the upgrade later because, you know, there's more damage over time chances from random stuff. But the way this works is she heals initially when she hits it. And then every time she attacks, she also heals for another, you know, bit of HP. It's per target hit, though. So if you use something like Yop, it heals twice, so she can heal for 40%. If you use an item like, you know, Scrap Grenade, which hits the entire enemy team, you can heal for 80% and then attack, so it's a full heal. I'm pretty sure that's going to get patched. There's no way that's going to stay in the game, but right now it's good. So if you do have that, then make use of it. But this is a move you should have on at all times for any build, just because it's so strong. Bleed Out is surprisingly good. It's just that Howling End is better. But otherwise, it's a lot of damage, and you don't really care if you wind yourself because the on-hit damage isn't that important. It's nice, but it's not important. And you really want that bleed damage. That's a lot of bleed. And if you have, what is it, the trophy that doubles your bleed damage, and then you crit with bleed out, you do 72, I believe, damage. No, 60. I think it's 60 damage over time with bleed over five turns before any on hit modifiers and stuff like that. That is a ton of damage. So if you can guarantee a crit, then this really pops off. Bloodlust, this is really just to remove winded before you upgrade toe to toe. The, the bleed damage setup is okay, but what you really want to do is have someone else that can bleed for her. So she hits Bloodlust, someone else applies a bleed like Jester, and then you start smacking him with something else. You know, or you can just bleed out spam, which is interesting to think about. So you could Bloodlust and then just hit bleed out every turn. That could be fun too. I haven't tried that. I kind of want to. Breakthrough was a meme. It's a bit better now with the changes, but it's still it's still not amazing. This is primarily repositioning. And so, upgraded, it hits decently hard, and it stops block gain, which can be nice. But uh, if you're not going to hit this every fight, then don't upgrade it. It's it's good. Like, there are things like Stygian, which guarantee enemies get combat advantage, and that can shuffle you repeatedly, or if you fight, you know, certain bosses that move you around, then it's good. Just make sure you have some way to clear winded, so either Bloodlust or Toe to Toe. Then we have Revelry. This is a really good move. It controls Hellion's stress very well, and it knocks one stress off the other people if they're at five. And it gives her DBR, which is cool, and it's a nice heal. And it's got a one-turn cooldown, so this is pretty good at keeping her alive. It's not as good as Adrenaline Rush, but it's nice to have something else. And then we have Howling End, something that's gotten nerfed a few times. And I'm not going to go through every single nerf it's ever gotten, because it's really irrelevant, but... When you upgrade it, the cooldown goes down, the damage goes up, the crit goes up and it wins her and moves her backwards. You gotta wait before you can use it again. And it doesn't matter how they nerf this move, as long as it hits as hard as it does and you can press it on turn one, it's always going to be good. It could be used once a battle, but the fact that you can, you know, ramp it as hard as it can, like this can crit into the 70s with like little effort. And it's really good at just erasing an enemy on turn one, which turns the fight into a 4v or 3v4 immediately. And that's like its best application, you know. Howling in kills something in the front turn one, your other teammates kill something else, and the fight's a 2v4 on turn two. And you are in such a strong position going forward. So Howling End is still busted. It's a really good move. And if they keep changing it and then they like nerf toe-to-toe, -to -toe, she's gonna be a bit uh, a bit worse, but I forgot to show this too here. So a lot of her moves give her winded, which is this token. And every, it stacks to three. 
and every time she gets a stash, she loses 33% damage and 3 speed. The 3 speed isn't too much of a big deal, because after the first one, it, you're already slower than the entire enemy team, so it doesn't matter. The minus damage can be played around or cured, so make sure you have a way out of winded if you want to keep using a lot of winded moves. Or if you're using bleeds, it doesn't matter as much because your focus is damage over time. All right, as far as paths go, let's see. Ravager. This is essentially Hellion Plus because Hellion already, already wants to be up front. So you get bonus damage and you get bonus HP. You randomly bleed yourself and you don't bleed enemies as often, but you're not running bleed out. So you put her up front and you could either run something like this, which is focusing on... Wicked Hack and Iron Swan, then you have some self-healing and a way to keep yourself up front. Or if you want to run Howling End, you can swap that in. Or if you're playing Stygian and you need to deal with the Shuffle modifier, you put on Breakthrough. And then you might run like Bloodlust. So something like this, you can change a couple of the other stuff, but really you want these two, like Iron Swan and Adrenaline Rush. But you want her to be in front as long as possible to keep those bonuses and you want to let her health get at least under half getting to 25% is a bit dangerous but you want her at least under half to get the extra 25% and just really start wrecking stuff and then like I said she scales very well with strength and crits but this is the most common and easy way to play this character there's one of the mountain bosses people always ask me in my stream and my YouTube comments they say how do I beat this boss I say get Ravager like that that's almost the end of the advice it's get sharp shot get Ravager you probably won at that point yeah so her next path is Berserker this one's pretty fun and I like the outfit a lot for this one but this is your bleed focus path the thing that really sucks with this one though is that you can't run both bleed moves together, so you have to decide what you're doing. So are you going to run... I guess you could run both like this, but... Are you going to spam bleed out, or are you going to spam if it bleeds? So if you're going to spam bleed out, what you want to do is Iron Swan for the first couple turns, make sure rank 4 is dead, and then start spamming bleed out and kill everything else in front of you. The reason is you always want to wind yourself later, not at the start, because then you have to remove it. If you want to run something like if it bleeds for instance then you can change stuff around and put her in two where she gets access to you know all this stuff here and you could run howling into but i i wouldn't recommend it you also don't need the what is it the winded cure as much so your last spot's very flexible i mean you could still run bleed off if you wanted to or toe to toe just to keep her in the the middle but yeah, and you can actually start this in, what is it, three, if you really wanted to, and just keep poking them with if it bleeds, and then, you know, toe to toe up here, and then use Wicked Hack. But yeah, your goal is to just bleed whatever you can hit, and you're better at bleeding with this path, but this is a pretty flexible path for her to run, so the, the teammates don't matter as much, because, I mean, if there is bleed synergy, it's good, but otherwise, she just sits there and, you know, just pokes stuff. And then we come to Carcass. This is the most interesting pass she has. And I, I definitely think this is the one people are going to have the most trouble running because it's not it's not a conventional, you know, damage up, move damage around type of path. So what Carcass is, is it's supposed to be an unkillable or near unkillable tank. And so if she ever gets crit, she can stress heal which you know crits always cause stress so this helps her keep her stress down if you use yop you can taunt so that means you can taunt with toe to toe and yop wicked hack removes block which isn't too much of a, a super awesome normal thing to really play around it's nice if it happens and then every turn you generate winded and then you have a chance to get block per winded token that you have so you don't want to clear winded there are times you still do because you can clear winded and then hit something really hard and then go back to winding yourself but really you just want to sit there and have her be a punching bag with carcass and there are two ways to main ways to handle this it's almost like berserker in a way so if you need to do damage you want to either run bleed out and put her in one or you want to run if it bleeds and put her in two or three probably two Definitely two, because that way you get Yop. 
And so you get around the winded damage penalty by using a bunch of damage over time. You're always a turn behind the enemy doing that, but I mean, it's it's a way to do consistent damage. So it's really your best option. And then for your skills, you want, you know, if you wanted to do if it bleeds, I actually think this is better to spam if it bleeds than uh, bleed out in carcass, but you definitely want both the self heals because she can really stay alive this way. I actually, a long time ago, had her solo a cultist fight because she had both her self heals and she kept generating block and bleeding the enemies and it worked. Go figure, that was a long time ago. So yeah, you want her to get hit and you can use Yop for the extra taunt and stuff, which is nice and the weaken. So she's, it's really hard to kill her in this path, but what you have to do to make up for it is you have to run a ton of damage for the other three people. So it's okay if she's here, you know, soaking up all the hits or in rank one, spamming bleed out, but that means you want to run something like Tempest Leper or Sharpshot Highwayman, Alchemist PD. Not saying this exact team, but you need to run a lot of damage to make up for Helene's lack of it with Carcass. In return, you get a very durable tank, which is fun to play. Not the most optimal, but definitely, definitely very fun. Next, it's time to talk about Hellion's Trinkets, and really you just want damage. But looking at the class ones, we have Bloodied Branch. The gain on crit strength is kind of nice. The if it bleeds bonus damage is really the best thing about this. And the rank four thing, you really aren't trying to be in rank four. So if it happens, you know, it happens. But if you can stay out of rank four, then that's cool. Otherwise, yeah, this is mostly an if it bleeds spamming trinket the strength is not as consistent and it's not even guaranteed if you crit so it's it's all right next is empty stein this is primarily a ravager trinket just because you get the self lead and that's it's not bad it's pretty good for that the one issue is that if you have any semblance of bleed resist that means that if you do resist a bleed then you might get weakened. Usually it's not a big enough deal to play around, but it's it's pretty good for Ravager. And then we have Rotten Tomato, which is very interesting in how it works. So we get to add combo and negative tokens from Breakthrough. That's pretty cool. Does it make you want to start with Breakthrough? Probably not. And if you are in rank two specifically, you get bonus damage. This is only for Wicked Hack for the most part. Actually, no, Howling End too, because you can Howling End out of a uh, 2, I forget about that. I apologize, my cats are having a boxing match. But yes, Rotten Tomato, flat damage, definitely not a bad one, if you want to put her in 2. As for other trinkets, she really just likes damage. I mean, if you're on Ravager, then getting Clotting Crore, I can't even say that word. I didn't know that was a word. <laughs> but yeah, that, that one's pretty good. And otherwise, bonus crit for Heart Seeker, not bad. Sharpness Charm for damage, not bad. Actually, I would even say it's good. Apron can be interesting, but the healing received from skills is a bit dangerous. Or the penalty, I should say. And then Knuckles for bonus damage. She doesn't really get much in the way of defensive tokens, but Grog can be nice because that flips Weaken into Strength. That could be really helpful. And Redoubt is a pretty good one for her because if she wins herself her speed goes down and so getting her down to like two speed for the extra turns isn't that hard to do but otherwise the normal suspects you know extra turn trinkets are always good wounding words for damage is pretty nice and compass is really good on her from the, the shroud and pretty much that's that's it there might be a couple others but uh maybe maybe cleansing class to get rid of negatives that aren't taunt potentially but otherwise you're just looking for damage survivability if you have nothing else but primarily damage to end the video let's talk about teammates that are good for hellion the first one is highwayman just because highwayman has a ton of reach he can really assist hellion in killing stuff no matter where it's at on the field plus highwayman has an easier time hitting rank three which Helene has a blind spot to if you put her up front. Or if you put Helene in rank 2, she can hit rank 4, so Dismas helps with that as well. The next teammate that I really like with Helene is Vestal. Vestal can drop all kinds of buffs with Consecration on Helene, 
and if Hellion gets low HP and you want to keep her there, you can use Sanctuary to guard her, which is nice, and you can also give her regen, so even if she death stores, she comes off a death store. The final really good character with Hellion is Jester. It's not even just the fact that Jester could move around and add bleed damage to her bleed stuff if you run a bleed team. It always comes down to Encore. So if you want to do things like Howling End and then toe to toe right after to mitigate the downsides, guess what? Encore lets you do that immediately. It's harder to recommend other frontliners with Hellion just because they kind of fight for space. Except maybe Man at Arms, but Man at Arms is good with everyone. All right, y'all, that's gonna do it for the video. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments if there's any other tips and tricks, etc., that I miss. Some other cool synergies out there, some good trinkets. At this point, we only have, I believe, two more hero guides to go. We have Plague Doctor and Man at Arms. I'm very surprised Man at Arms came in almost like dead last on the voting, just because it's so crucial, at least in my opinion, to understand him to do well in this game. But he'll be one of the last two that we do. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.